Welcome everyone. Let's talk about a very common presentation to emergency department, which is acute heart failure. Acute heart failure may be uh, a new heart failure in a patient with normal heart, then suddenly they get a problem and they will get heart failure or worsening of the pre-existing chronic heart failure. The causes of acute heart failure include increased preload. What is preload? Preload is the volume of the blood that received by the heart, causing stretching of the myocardial muscles to produce contractility and produce uh, output. So when there is increase in the volume that returns to the heart, there is overly, flu, uh, volume overload or fluid retention, it causes acute heart failure. Failure of myocardial contractility. Why myocardium not contract is very well? Because of ischemia, infarction, sometimes because of infections, cardiomyopathy. Some drugs might cause heart failure, might cause decreased contractility and uh, toxins. Increased, increased afterload. So what is afterload? Afterload is the pressure or the resistance the heart has to overcome to eject blood. So example, systemic or pulmonary hypertension or valvular dysfunction that uh, causing problem of the uh, output. Abnormalities in the cardiac rhythm, for, uh, for example, IF or ventricular tachycardia, increased cardiac demand, normal heart, normal input, normal output, but there is high output state. Uh, the, the demand is more than normal. Example, in cases of infection leading to sepsis, in extreme or sudden anemia, thyrotoxicosis, some, some drugs that cause increased demand. The most common problem of patients with pre-existing heart failure is not adherence to the medications. So because many of these patients, they are elderly, they have difficulty in mobility, they have osteoporosis of the knee, so they don't want to go to toilet too much to go to urination because of um, diureticus. So this diuretic is causing that problem. They don't take it, so for after two to three days, they get sudden shortness of breath and pulmonary edema. Or sometimes, they take their medication, but they introduce new medications. For example, because of pain, they take non-steroidal cyclooxygenase inhibitor, steroids, so it will cause fluid retention and acute on chronic heart failure. Acute heart failure is usually characterized by pulmonary congestion. It means there is a lot of fluid, but sometimes there is reduced cardiac output and tissue hyperperfusion. Anyhow, patients typically present in one of these six clinical categories. So we have six main clinical categories of acute heart failure, most commonly is pulmonary edema. What are these six clinical categories? The first one is decompensated chronic heart failure. A patient with chronic heart failure taking his drug and adapted to the problem and there is compensatory mechanisms. But when they get an infection or then when they stop their medication or due to any other reason, they, there will be progressive worsening of the symptoms. There is increase in the shortness of breath. So there will be systemic or pulmonary congestion. So in these cases, it is mild, but still needs treatment. In, if not treated properly, they may get pulmonary edema. In pulmonary edema, it's more severe form. There will be severe respiratory distress. There will be tachypnea. There will be orthopnea. The patient cannot lie down widespread crackles on chest auscultation, oxygen saturation less than 90%. So this case is very common. Number three, hypertensive heart failure. In this case, there is no much fluid overload. The patient is either eovolumic or only very mildly hypervolumic. What is the problem here? The problem here is that there is increased sympathetic tone. So there will be, there will be vasoconstriction systemic vasoconstriction, there will be tachycardia, very high blood pressure reaching more than 200 systolic. So in these cases, there is little pulmonary congestion, but the problem is that uh, they usually have very high blood pressure and vasoconstriction. Such patients 
may respond well to vasodilators, example, Greece red trinitrate. This, uh, so apart from diuretic, they, disp they respond well to the GTN. Cardiogenic shock. This is the problem. The, the, there is fluid overload, but at the same time, there is tissue hypoperfusion. The heart is so weak that it cannot pump the blood so well, so there will be cardiogenic shock. This will lead to um, uh, hyperperfusion and this lead to uh, organ failure. The problem here is that you cannot give diuretic because of cardiogenic shock. You cannot give GTN because of uh, uh, hypotension. So what you do, you have to start with inotropic agents like noradrenaline until you elevate the blood pressure more than 90 or more than 100 systolic, then you give a diuretic. Isolated heart, right heart failure, this is uh, common in patients with, who have pulmonary uh, problems like COPD, asthma, or pulmonary hypertension. So there is usually absence of pulmonary congestion. There is no, uh, no crackles, but there is raised JVP uh, with or without hepatomegaly, leg edema. Acute coronary syndrome with heart failure, this is common. Uh, so some patients, they get suddenly uh, acute coronary syndrome and heart failure. So there will be chest pain, symptoms, ECG change, and also uh, elevated troponin. What are the investigations that you do? F the most important thing is vital sign. Blood pressure and SpO2 is very important in these cases. So ECG. ECG should not be done if the patient is too dyspneic. Please, if a patient presented with pulmonary edema, give them oxygen, withdraw blood, send for investigation, give them lasicus, give them diuretic if appropriate. Then if they improve, do an ECG. An ECG even can be done in the sitting position, but do not delay treatment because of ECG. Start treatment immediately, delay the ECG, Don't, no problem. Then full blood count. Uh, to, to know if there is anemia or if there is um, signs of infection. Glucose, renal function test, electrolytes, they rarely affect the management. Troponin, troponin is important because, uh, although in, heart, in acute heart failure there is some, of, some raised troponin, but in acute coronary syndrome there is, a lot, uh, there is uh, the uh, troponin raised a lot. Chest x-ray, only to uh, confirm the diagnosis or to see if there is other reasons for this shortness of breath. Example, if the patient is having pneumonia, so you find consolidations. So do not wait for the results of investigation to start treatment. Uh, what are the, uh, the chest x-ray changes? One of them is cardiothoracic ratio is increased more than half, so there will be cardiomegaly, there will be a uh, bat wing sign, there will be curly B line, there will be uh, congestion of the pulmonary vessels. So all these can, sometimes there might be plural effusions. Uh, all these changes uh, can define the uh, heart failure. What is the treatment? The first important treatment is sitting or semi-sitting position because if the patient lying down, uh, they, they feel that they are suffocating. Give oxygen 100%, 15 liters per minute if hypoxia, less than 92%, or they feel dyspnea. Even if their SpO2 is normal, but if they feel too much dyspnea, they ask for oxygen, give them oxygen. Furosamide, it is a loop diuretic. Usually you give uh, one or two ampoule. Each ampoule is 20 milligram. So you give two ampoule each time. You wait for how much in order to, to know the response? You wait for 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. If there is no response, give another two ampoule. But before each, uh, before each lasicus, you have to measure the blood pressure. Because if they are hypotensive, do not give more lasicus. How much lasicus you give? In some textbooks, it's written you can give up to 200 milligram. It means 10 ampoule. In some of them, written 360. It means you you can give even uh, you can give um, 
more than 15 amperes. Glycerid trinitrate, trinitrate NG seed sublingual tablet 0.6 milligram. It can also repeat it after five minutes. So this one is usually you can be reserved for those who have high blood pressure. If blood pressure is more than 180 or more than 160, you can give them GTN. It is a vasodilator. So it is uh, mostly useful for patients with who have hypertensive heart failure. New guidelines are against morphine. Previously, we were giving morphine, uh, but nowadays they say that morphine can increase mortality and morbidity in patients with uh, in patients with acute heart failure. It's only used when there is very severe chest pain or distress. Then you can give a low dose uh, morphine, like five milligram. Of course, you have to consider Foley catheter. If uh, the patient do not agree, you can um, tell them to put a, a condom catheter or, or uh, even diaper. So this is mostly because you don't want the patient to go to the toilet too much and also to monitor the urine output. If the patient is in shock state, cardiogenic shock, uh, sometimes despite fluid resuscitation, they still having uh, shock. So you have to start with noradrenaline is the best choice or dopamine, dobutamine. But nowadays, noradrenaline is the fairest choice. I will give you the correct dosage after that. If the patient do not respond after, um, after maximal therapy and uh, the pH is less than 7.3 when you do IBG. You can ask for the uh, RCU doctor, anesthesia doctor, to come and help you to put a CPAP. The CPAP is very helpful in patients who have severe shortness of breath or they have acidosis. Noradrenaline. Noradrenaline is used for cardiogenic shock, for septic shock for hypovolemic shock sometime uh, in order to start the treatment anyhow for uh, any of these the, the, the it is a good alpha agonist and also stimulates the beta one for contractility of the heart in the alpha one causes vasoconstriction the dose is 5 to 30 microgram per minute but how to prepare it in our emergency department usually it should be given with infusion pump but if infusion pump not available you have to put one ampoule which is eight milligram uh, some ampoules are eight milligrams some of them they are four milligram anyhow one or two ampoule until you reach eight milligram in 500 ml normal saline each mil will be containing 60 microgram so if you calculate this dosage it would be perfect to give 30 ml per uh, hour first then you ha you can increase to 60 ml per hour even more in patients with isolated right heart failure the standard management of heart failure may not be very appropriate sometimes vasodilators nitrates opiates diuretics uh, can lead to cardiovascular collapse so they may precipitate the condition you have to give them cautiously the right ventricular preload must be maintained with IV fluid. So if the patient have suspected right ventricular failure, example in right ventricular infarction, you have to give uh, IV fluid if they are in shock state, especially in patients with inferior MI. Inotropes may, may be required if they do not respond to IV fluid. And you have to monitor the central venous pressure to guide the treatment. So the mainstay of acute heart failure treatment is giving oxygen, give loop diuretic every 20 minutes, give nitrate if the blood pressure is high. If the patient not responding, you may give non-invasive ventilation, fluid as required if you are suspecting flu, um, right side heart failure. If the patient is in shock state, start inotropous like noradrenaline. Thank you so much and special thanks for Housing Organization for preparing the 
slides.